All right, so my talk at the CMS winter meeting this year is going to be about some of the assessment strategies that I use this year in my course. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about my course materials too, because I think some of the strategies that I used wouldn't be possible without some of these materials. Um, and in particular, I want to talk about the book. Uh, the book is written using pretext. Um, and this is sort of the, the main cover page. All right. um, this is Apex Calculus, originally done by Greg Hartman. Um, and uh, the conversion to pretext was started several years ago by Alex Jordan uh, and some other people at Portland Community College. Uh, I joined on a couple of years ago. And if you've never seen a pretext book before, um, pretext is basically an XML language um, that allows you to create open textbooks in a multiple uh, of formats, right? So this is the HTML version, but we can also produce PDF. Um, we're very close to being able to produce EPUB with about the same amount of effort that it takes to produce, you know, your, your PDF or your HTML. And people are also very hard at work on a Braille um, output option, and that's getting there. Um, the Braille output is largely due to the fact that Pretext uh, relies on MathJax for the HTML output. And, and MathJax, a lot of people don't realize this. You just see MathJax as a way of getting you know, LaTeX to render in your browser. But MathJax has all of these awesome accessibility tools that are built in um, for people with visual impairments, um, dyslexia, other learning disabilities. MathJax is actually really fantastic. Um, and uh, you know, now uh, I won't say this is easy. It's been a lot of work. You can see you know, this has been a couple of years in the making that we've been working on this. I'm, I'm at just over half a million lines of code committed to the project. Um, so we're, you know, it's, it's quite a bit of work. Uh, if you want wondering what some of the source looks like, uh, it, uh, yeah, it, it's broken down into chapters and sections. And the first time you look at it, if you're used to LaTeX, um, it might look slightly intimidating, but it's actually pretty straightforward once you get used to it. Uh, a big difference between, say, LaTeX is that you have to indicate things like your paragraphs, right? And you have starting and closing tags, right? So rather than dollar signs, M, closing M for your math mode, anything that's between the M's is just regular LaTeX, and that's rendered by MathJax in the HTML. Yeah. But it's the usual story. You indicate your structure, section, title, introduction. Here's a figure with a caption. It includes a video. Um, right? um, this is just standard ticks code here, generating a figure. Right? And we get out of it this nice HTML with a bit of processing. Um, that particular section we were looking at there was for the fundamental theorem of calculus. There's that figure with the video, video introduction. Right? These are YouTube videos that I happen to be making anyway, and the great thing about pretext is I can build them into the book. Um, so what else can we do with a pretext book? I mean, yes, videos are great. That's a nice thing to be able to add. Um, well, a nice thing for a lot of our students is they can access a little graphing calculator with the click of a button. There it is. It's based on GeoGebra. It is GeoGebra. It's a GeoGebra calculator that's built in. Um, uh, an optional flag you can set when you're building allows you to also uh, install Hypothesis as an option. Hypothesis is an annotation tool. Um, and there's nothing here yet, but with that I could choose to, um, for example, I could highlight. If I want to highlight, right, uh, I could choose to leave a sticky note. And I can decide whether those are personal items or things that I want to share with the class. Right? And then we have our, our sort of book as usual. Uh, one of the nice things I think with uh, with pretext is that when you see an example, you'll notice the the solution is not there by default. Gives the student an opportunity to maybe think about that. Should I maybe try this question before I look at the solution? Some will, some won't. When you're ready, there's the solution again. Um, in a lot of these, I've given them the option of watching a video solution. Uh, a lot of the students in first year are still really learning how to read a book, um, a, a math book in particular, and they, they don't always get everything that they need out of the text solution. So I think the video helps some of them. So we have that. Um, other features in the book that I think are kind of nice. Uh, one is this um, idea that um, references are sort of in context, right? You see here like example 5.4.3. 
And now, of course, that was just up there. But suppose you'd forgotten about it. You can click the link and it says, hey, here's what that example was about, in case you'd forgotten. Same thing with theorems, right? Theorems, definitions, right? You say, okay, we're using properties of the integral from a theorem. Hey, that theorem is from two sections ago. And maybe I don't want to have to navigate back to find out what it is. No problem. There's the theorem, right? It's there right at my fingertips when I need it, which I think is really cool. Um, and by the way, for those who are doing, let's say, print on demand out of their pretext source, one of the really cool features I think that is uh, that is in there is all these videos. You might wonder, like, a student who gets a print copy, what do they do with the videos? Well, uh, in the print copy, each of these videos gets uh, turned into a little figure, which includes a thumbnail of the video beside a QR code, uh, and then a student that has a smartphone with them while they're reading the, the paper book can just snap the QR code and go straight to the video if they want to watch the videos as they read their paper copy of the book. That I think is really cool. Uh, the other thing I want to point out when we get to the bottom, uh, pardon the scrolling, I should just sort of drag it down. When we get to the exercises at the bottom, you'll notice that a lot of them have this make interactive button. The reason is that these exercises are actually authored in a sort of a pretext version of, of web work. Uh, I can drag you down, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, you can see it here. Um, there, this is an exercise, which is a web work problem, which has some uh, P PG code. So PG is the, is the language that we use for, um, for web work, right? Um, and so these problems are interactive, they're randomized. Right? A student can click the button, turn it into a web work problem, and they can try it. And if they're struggling with this particular type of question, right, they can, they can attempt the problem, they can enter it. I, I don't know what the right answer is here. It's probably not 15, but uh, oops, enter does not work. My apologies. You can tell how often I actually use these. Um, we can do that. Uh, oh, that one I can definitely answer. Right. There's some pretty simple ones here. But there, make it interactive. I want to check my answer, e to the 3 minus e, click that button, check the answer, tells me I'm right. Uh, if I want to try a different version, not all of these are randomized. This one is not randomized. Um, we're working on updating the code so that if a question is not random, that randomized button won't be there. Um, but in some cases, when you click the randomized button, you will get a new version. It's still a work in progress. Eventually, we will have randomization for all the problems in the book. Um, we have, I think, web work coding is done for the first maybe three chapters. We're working on four and five. Eventually, we'll have the entire book. Um, the other thing that's kind of nice is that once we get into sections with 3D content, um, the 3D figures are written in asymptote. And um, Asymptote, for the last year or so, has had the ability to output to WebGL. So all of these 3D figures, they're interactive. You can drag them, turn them, zoom in, zoom out. Um, and so you get, I think, a pretty cool experience playing around with the textbook. Um, this, is, this has been a real advantage to me. It's sort of, it's freed up a lot of what I do. I don't necessarily have to worry about direct instruction anymore. I can kind of guide the students through the book. We meet up to sort of talk about the things that they struggle with, and, and they can rely on this as a resource. Um, other things that are not in this book but are possible um, are things like um, sage cells. I have another book, which is a linear algebra textbook, that has embedded sage cells running some Python code so that students can, rather than trying to do you know things like solving systems of equations by hand, they can let the computer do it and start to focus on things like, hey, what happens if I change some of the parameters, right? Um, so you can quickly change things in the problem, uh, use the computer to solve, and you can play around that way, which is also, I think, pretty cool. Uh, uh, interactives are there, too. You can build GeoGebra applets into the book, Desmos. Um, there's a number of interactive items that are supported. Uh, and, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's really cool. I'm... One of the best things I think that's happened to me in the last few years was that I sort of stumbled on this, this pretext community. Here's the, uh, the website for it, pretextbook.org. Uh, and 
not only has this been a great tool for me, and it's been really sort of useful uh, in terms of authoring textbooks, but uh, a lot of the people in this community, a lot of the people who are sort of the early adopters and have books authored in pretext, they're also really dedicated educators, and a lot of them are pushing the, the boundaries of, of assessment methods and instructional methods and pedagogy. And it's, it's a great group of people to be in touch with. Um, and yeah, if you're um, if you're all interested, let me know. There's a I started a a thread forum. I don't know what we call it on that Whova app. There's a there's a discussion place for web work uh, or sorry not for web work for pretext. If you run if you're curious, you can ask me more questions there. Send me an email. Come to my talk on Monday. Um, all of those are definitely options.